Aha! Hi everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to cover risk and relative risk. And how can you interpret them when reading a clinical study? So first of all, what is a risk? So when it comes into medical field, risk is simply the probability of an event to happen. And this is like an unwanted event or unfavorable event. So it could be anything like side effect or a condition that is happening. It's either with the treatment group, with a new medication, or it's happening in the placebo. So that's what risk is. And the formula for risk is basically It's basically number of people, this could be participant, patient, number of people with the event okay, over number, actually over the total. So this is in the group, number of people with the event in the group over the total people in the group. So basically what we're trying to do over here, we're trying to take the number of people that had the event, let's take cough for example, how many people, so let's take an example, so let's say we have patient are taking a new medication, it's called drug A. And this drug A is known to cause cough. So can cause cough. So we're trying to see the risk in the group. So we have a group, so a number of people and I'm just going to be picking some simple number just to make it easy to understand. We have number of people of 100. Okay, so this is the total. And then out of these 100, 10 people had cough. So following the equation, we know that risk in this case would be 10, so it's going to be 10 over 100. So 10 over 100 is 0.1%. Or we can represent this as, if we multiply it by 100, it's going to be 10%. So we had 10% of the group, 10% of the people had the risk of cough. So that's where risk is. So now, what is relative risk? So relative risk or it's going to be RR is basically risk in the treatment group over risk in the placebo group. So this doesn't need to be a placebo, it could be a drug that already exists in the market and we're comparing our drug, drug A over here, which is the new drug, to the one that exists already in the market and we're trying to see which of them cause more cough. Okay, what are the risks? What is the risk for each one of them? Does the medication that the company is developing, drug A, have higher risk of causing cough or the one that is already in the market um, causes more cough? So there are three results that can 
happen when uh, we have relative risk. So what are these three options? So the first one, if we have relative risk that is larger than one. So what does this mean? So if we have a relative risk larger than one, this means, first of all, why did I pick one? Well, when we're doing relative risk, we always use one and not any other number because we're trying to compare the risk in the treatment group over risk in the placebo group. And because this is a division, so if we had higher event, if the risk is with the treatment group is higher than the risk in the placebo group, this means that we will have higher number or larger number of people with the cough event over here in comparison to the placebo. So because we have high number over here in comparison to um, the placebo group, we're going to end up with a number that is larger than one. Okay, it's going to be larger than one. In this case, we can conclude that the treatment group has larger risk of the event. And again, this could be a cough, could be a condition, could be different things. So that's what relative risk larger than one means. Another case would be if relative risk is actually equal to one, okay? This means that the number of people in the treatment group, which is the medication that the company is developing, is equal to the number of people in the placebo group that had the event, which is cough. So if you have the same number over here to this number over here, that means both of them had the same risk of causing cough. Therefore, this medication is not better than this, nor this medication is better than this. So in this case, what we can conclude is simply the risk is the same. Or you could say there is no, the risk in between the two groups is similar or there is no difference. So it's the same thing. The risk in both group is the same thing. There is no difference in between the two. That's what relative risk equal to one mean. A third option would be if we had relative risk that is less than one. So it's going to be opposite to the one that is larger than one. So if relative risk is less than one, this means that the number of people who had the event, which is cough in this case, in the treatment group were less than the placebo. So we had higher number on the bottom in comparison to the top. So when you have high number on the bottom in comparison to top, this means that our medication, the, the one that the company is developing, is actually better because less people had cough in comparison to the placebo. So here we can conclude that the placebo group has larger or it could be higher risk of the event. So these are the three options. Whenever you see relative risk, you're gonna come around. Now, let's take an example to better understand how risk and relative risk can be interpreted. So I picked over here, first of all, the question asks, does lisinopril cause more cough versus placebo? So I picked over here easy numbers just to make the concept better and easier to understand. So here I have lisinopril, which is an ACE inhibitor and which is also known to cause cough. We have 100 patients, five of them did have the event, which is cough. Placebo, we have 100, 10 of them did cause cough. So now let's calculate, in order to calculate the relative risk, we need to calculate risk first. 
So risk in the treatment group, so risk, I said it's basically number of people that had the event, which is five in this case, over the total number in the group, which is 100. So the answer would be 0 0.05. This is the risk in the treatment group. Now, let's move into the risk in the placebo. Over here, we have the risk is we have 100, 100 total and then 10 of them had the cough. So 10 over 100 because number of people with the event over the total and this is going to be 0.1, 0 0.1. Now I have the risk for both of the groups. Now I can calculate relative risk. So relative risk is basically the risk of the the risk in the treatment group over the risk in the placebo. So here we have 0 0.05 over 0 0.1. And the answer is 0 0.5. Or this could be decimal or it could be in percentage. So what we could do, we can take 0 0.5 multiplied by 100 and this is going to be 50%. So what this means, now let's go to the interpretation. So it's 0.5 and just over here, I did cover that if it's less than one, so if relative risk, less than one, this means that the treatment group, which is less than a problem in this case, did better. So here we have 50% of the people in comparison to placebo, because we have exactly 100 in each and this is basically doesn't happen in reality. These are perfect numbers. In reality, you'll see different numbers, but just to make it easy, I picked these numbers. So we have 50% of the people with the event, so five in comparison to 10 over here, had the event of cough. Therefore, our inter interpretation would be, since relative risk is less than one and here is 50% or 0.5, so the lisinopril group is 50% as likely to cause cough in comparison to the placebo, okay? 50% as likely to cause cough when we're comparing that to placebo because it does have lower risk uh, than the placebo. And in this case, actually a researcher would like that because their medication is basically doing better. Therefore, it's gonna be moving in the trials and it's gonna probably get approved by the FDA if everything goes fine. So this is it for this lecture. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.